you know, where we are right now, and I think it really made sense for me when I saw the, um, the documentary um, Victoria's Secret, Angels and Demons. Mm -hmm. And here's a brand who accumulated so much wealth, mm -hmm. Lex Wessner. And they talked about so many different, you know, disparaging things about, you know, obviously the Harvey Weinstein, the Epstein situation. And that's not what I'm trying to get at. What mm -hmm. I'm trying to get at is from the brand side, mm -hmm. how they were tone deaf mm -hmm. to understanding that, OK, what got us here isn't going to take us there. Mm -hmm. Meaning what got us to a multi-billion dollar entity mm -hmm. is not going to keep us as a multi-billion. We got to evolve. We got to evolve. Yeah. They did not evolve. Yeah. And now when you see companies like Fenty, yeah. led by Rihanna, yeah. she's like, bro, I, I'm not just trying to appease to the Caucasian blue eyes, yeah. perfect, skinny, yeah. you know, petite body yeah. with a little plump, not a lot of plump, but a little <laughs> plump. Although well, all, you know, race is showing a little bit more, you know, these days. Come on. Artificial and, and natural. Synthetic yes, model. Yes, I, or, I, yes. Or what, what that, <laughs> for coming from a man, I don't, me personally, I don't care. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you invest in yourself, yeah. then how, if you don't invest in yourself, I don't yeah. care if you're going to get an Equinox membership, an LA Fitness membership, <laughs> uh, or, or just walking Dr. down the Simon street. Or seeing Dr. Simon in Los Angeles. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> How you expect me to invest in you with your time? With yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm not judging. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, listen, for Victoria's Secret, they painted an image that was appeasing for a time. Mm -hmm. When people start realizing, like, listen, that don't, that's not me. Mm -hmm. I can't fit in a size two. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's like, I can't fit in a size 30, bro. Like, and Abercrombie and Finch, like, that's not, like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fit man that, Bro, I can't be 220 if I wanted to. I will kill myself. Well, I do feel like um, over time, you know, um, more women have been embracing, you know, self-love. Mm -hmm. um, you see more plus-size models em em embraced on the runway. Um, you see it in the music industry right. with people like Lizzo and what have you, um, fully embracing that on Instagram. Sometimes I feel like I see more people being either natural without makeup, whether it's Alicia Keys or just regular women being okay with showing their stretch marks and right. things like that. Right. But, you know, even one of the things I just wanted to say to you just relative to what I feel like has been my experience, um, speaking of self-love over the last couple of years is just, I learned so much about stress management and, um, you know, just processing trauma, mm -hmm. you know, specific, specifically Mental even. Health. Well, I mean, just, you know, you know, I'm not married, I don't have kids. And so my job was just really important to me, mm -hmm. you know, and I've always been like that. I mean, I've sacrificed, I've been on the road for 20 years covering these games, mm -hmm. 20 years. And I'm okay with that, like right. I'm good with that. We've talked. You know, the guys on my show always, you know, make fun of me for being a doggy mama. We can get into that or what have you. But what I'm really trying to get into, especially because you talking about just impactful things and I want people to hear this, is that, you know, um, what I learned in that time was just about the effect of stress. And a lot of people don't know this, and I will talk about this on your show, is that when I when I left ESPN, and I know, I know Carlos who's helping me here, you know, as, as a, a PR rep, but a lot of people don't know in the time that I left ESPN, like I lost 40% of my hair. Mm. And um, and I went through alopecia. <laughs> and, I know what alopecia is, I had alopecia. And um, it, it's a direct correlation for people who don't know, it can spark a lot of things, but one of the main things yeah. is stress. Yes. Is, yes, it can be, it can, you can have onset of that. And so to lose, you know, my job and to have lost my hair at the same time, I remember a lot of people watch Fox and CBS, uh, excuse me, uh, CBS with uh, James Brown mm -hmm. uh, in the mornings. And people also don't know that he's a minister. And there were just times that him and his wife were just on the phone with me where like, I felt like for eight or nine months, I couldn't stop crying when I got up. Mm. Not only was I dealing with the loss of my job, but I couldn't even look in the mirror. Like I couldn't comb my hair. Mm. Um, and, and you don't really realize, and, and people, it's like, it's just hair. 
but you don't really realize how much your hair is associated to your identity and how you feel just going out in the day, just if the wind is gonna blow your hair and, and is it gonna show. Like I had a, a bald spot that was the size of my hand here. Mm -hmm. I had one that was the size you know, of a orange in the back of my head here and the size of like a, a golf ball here. Right. And people didn't know because my natural hair um, is, is thick by itself and right. I haven't had a perm for 10 years. So I would still wear it down on the air and you wouldn't even know that I was right. covering up those spots and even just being intimate with the man or what have you. I mean, I started to I started to feel and resolve within myself that I was just gonna wear ponytails for the rest of my life. And so over that time, um, you know, I, I, I became so educated about Ayurveda and yoga, and you know, I, I, it's almost like I fell in love with the produce section in in the grocery store. And now I'm so much more educated on just herbs and Eastern medicine and all the natural things that are already on this earth that can just heal yeah, your body without right. Western medicine. And I, I just and I just I just wanted to say that we don't when you when you're dealing with stress in your life, especially if you don't have an outward case like mine where it shows, right. you don't really realize how much that's just ravaging inside your body. And and that's what stress does. Mm -hmm. And and I just want to say like Last year, when all of a sudden, let me just say this real quick, I was walking, I had moved to a new place and I was walking into my bedroom and, and T.D. Jakes was on, <laughs> was on the, uh, YouTube. And I walked into my bedroom and T.D. Jakes said, and God said he was gonna give your hair back. And I had to like, and I was like, did he just say that? Yeah. And I was like, that couldn't have been. So I had to like rewind it back on the YouTube because I was like, did I just hear what I heard? But what I didn't realize is there is a character in, in the Bible who had lost their hair and it came back. Mm -hmm. But literally as I walked in, that's what I heard. And like within three weeks, I mean, I, and I haven't showed these pictures, eventually I will or what have you, but my hair came back so quick. Mm. I mean, I'm just talking about two months. It just started like every, I never thought, I never thought it would come back. Right. And the point of that story is, is that as much as you can tell yourself that you are okay, your brain is so smart mm. to really realize when it's actually true. Mm. When you really reach the place of acceptance of your circumstance or just being at peace with something. And I really felt like at that point when I was willing to accept it and other things that had occurred and, and especially the loss of what I felt was so big to my identity and just almost maybe similar mm. to you with football or what have you or whatever else going on in your life is that that's when, it, that's when it came back. And that to me, that was like reflective of a lot of different things, you know? Man, listen, <laughs> I, was, I was like stuck, cause I'm like, <laughs> damn. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day too, mm. and you were speaking on your identity and internal acceptance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To you, it, it may have been hair. Mm. To me, it may be my size. Mm. To another person, it may be you marriage, know, their husband, it's other my, things. My husband, my man, my my, car, my partner, my, my girl, my dog, <laughs> yeah, my and, yeah. and when you lose that, yes, it's like oh my goodness, now what, God? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, like where are you? What are you telling me? And then people, you know, start blaming God, and it's like, well, if you love me so much, why you do this? Why? And, why? Like me? what? Like and instead mm -hmm. of saying why not me, mm -hmm. because more people identify with what you're going on mm -hmm. or what you got going on mm -hmm. more than you even know. Mm -hmm. So you even sharing that story is mm -hmm. going to make people say like, you know what, bro? I fuck with Josina. Mm -hmm. She ain't have to tell me that because I always looked at you. You know, in a way where you want to, you 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 want to me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You 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 us. Yeah. You feel me? And when I was reaching out to you, and I was like, man, bro, I want, I need Josina to come talk because I need a strong black woman, and I need a strong woman that can hold her on it, and let's have a real conversation mm -hmm. because. I don't know what went down at ESPN. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't even care. And mm -hmm. what God has for you is even bigger than that. I, I, I claim that. Mm -hmm. But we would have never been able to have this type of mm -hmm. transcript mm -hmm. in, in that field. Mm -hmm.